I'm James. Um, this is um, our house truck, Bedford um, house truck that uh, I bought second hand and uh, completely refurbished it and gave it back some life essentially. So this was original, uh, this was built on the back, it's definitely one of my favourite pieces about it. Um, these posts are all original, I did a pretty shoddy job but um, I'll bring them back to life again. Um, and here is our shower. So. I didn't want to bring the shower inside just because I didn't want the steam and the issues with that so and I wanted to use the space um, for other things so it's definitely not very private um, but where I built it we lived in the middle of nowhere but it does steam up really fast uh, we live in this dwelling because I could buy a house for five hundred dollars um, and it's just an easy way of living, like we don't have the stresses of owning a home and the financial worries of owning a home. It just creates so much more freedom for us. I don't make a hell of a lot of money, I'm still an apprentice builder. Um, Lucy's just started her own gardening business. Yeah, it means we don't have to work crazy hours. Um, and we can come home and, and be more in touch with the land as well. And we've yeah. got space here to... Um, have our own gardens and grow our own food. Um, yeah, we just compared to everyone we know that has houses, we just we're much more laid back. <laughs> it's funny because people always like kind of envy this lifestyle, but I'm like, you can do it. People just don't want to do it, but they say they do. They're too scared to do it, and there is quite a lot of uh, work involved, I guess, on the daily, um, and there's lots of little things that you have to do. You know, like we have to fill the water tank because I built this for off grid and it's not a big tank. It's like small little things that people would find like such an inconvenience, but we are just used to it. And, you know, I bought this before Lucy and it didn't take much for Lucy to get used to it. It's a pretty shit set up. <laughs> I'll definitely do it different nowadays, but like this is honestly just like hoses. Um, this is a gas califont. It does get hooked up to the tank. Um, I have got a backflow because that's to do with the pressure. So this is an 8 litre, so if I just had it going the full full tilt of the pump, it would mean that it would be a lot um, colder. So you have to kind of mess with the backflow and that, that changes the pressure. So the less pressure, the hotter it gets. Um, but it's funny because now I go into a normal house and I actually hate really intense pressure. I find it a lot. I really like, it's a lot more peaceful I find. This here, um, so we have a compost toilet with a urine diverter, um, but we found that not having any kind of water going through it, um, it started to smell because it calcifies and does all those bits and pieces. So this is another kind of little thing. It's not very nice to look at, but it does the job. And it means that I can just turn a wee valve and a little bit of water goes down the urine diverter. When I bought this, um, it had been sitting in a paddock for 30 years. Um, so this is why I fell in love with it, just because it's like, it was once upon on the road, it was original. I didn't actually have to mess with the structure. I definitely didn't have the skills that I have now. I probably would have changed a few things, but um, yeah, I had to completely strip the outside, put new ply on it because um, it wasn't weather tight. Um, I haven't actually touched the roof, which is amazing because my kind of theory is if it doesn't leak, don't touch it. A lot of recycled materials, you know, uh, same thing, I, I was just living off my, my paycheck that I was getting in. I didn't have a hell of a lot of money. I did have some saved up, but I didn't want to touch into that. I was just trying to like pick away at what I was making. The kitchen unit was actually already in here. Um, I couldn't actually take it out unless I cut it in half. So I kind of seen that as a sign and I was like, well, might as well keep something that's original. I'm always going to cherish this home because of the what I was able to create without the proper tools and this and the skills. Something that I really love because I needed to have a big step, but it's just a wee little box I made, and it's also a wee boot box. Um, these doors are original. Yeah, I wanted to keep them because they're such a beautiful feature of the house truck. Um, I guess now you're in here. I should probably go into the toilet here. So this is our composting toilet. So like I said, we have the urine diverter just with a wee bucket. Um, I can kind of actually lift it up. It has got some stuff in it, but whatever. And then I have a wee extraction fan. So that is really important in um, the composting toilets. Um, if you don't have that, it's pretty feral.
um, but I, I love these more than a normal toilet because if you have a normal toilet, you go to the toilet, take a number two, it smells for a couple of hours, whereas you could literally go and ask someone and you don't smell anything. So the fan is an awesome idea. And um, it's really small and compact, but you shit in it. <laughs> I'm not going to waste space for something that you use three or four times a day. It's just a waste of space. These are the solar panels here. These are um, monos. So the difference between mono and polo is these will absorb more light. They're a newer version, but they're definitely getting a lot cheaper now. These were like 600 bucks. Um, yeah, so they're 320 watts each. Um, I've got them on a certain angle for the summer, but for the winter, um, I do change the angle. So um, I make them higher because the sun's lower. I didn't actually change them last year. I didn't have too many issues, but um, you, having them flat on your roof is, is not ideal. You do want them down low. So not down low essentially, but I didn't want them on the roof because we do get some high winds here. Um, yeah, and this is just a wee shitty frame that I've made with some timber and they're weighed down with some rocks, like nothing special. I think the hardest times are when it's raining outside, mm. like today, and um, you know, you go outside and you come in and there's no kind of um, entranceway or laundry room or whatever space yeah. where you can take off your wet clothes and your boots, you know, you're in the house straight away, so things get really messy mm. um, on a rainy day. Um, yeah, and sometimes you get a bit cabin fevery as well, but that's why we've got the glass house and we've got the camper van as well yeah. to give ourselves some space away from each other if we need it. Um, but yeah, we really don't, we really don't have that many issues with the space to be honest. No, like I think you just got to find the right person that can live with in a space like this. Um, wardrobe. This is original. Um, it is nice to have a full standing wardrobe. A lot of people might say it's a bit of a waste of space, but um, I just can't, I don't know. A lot of people just have these tiny boxes with all their clothes and me and the partner definitely appreciate having to hang up uh, our nicer clothes and our shirts and things like that. This here is fireplace. So this is designed by a guy in Christchurch out of an old um, gas bottle. One of those real big ones and he cuts it in half. This thing cranks, like I've had this thing blowing. Um, it's amazing like it's such a good fireplace because it's also really long a lot of the fireplaces are too small you got to cut all your firewood really small whereas this you can have full length firewood I can shut it down overnight you can even shut the flue off and shut them both off and if you have like a nice hardwood in there she'll go all night so this is a bathtub that is um, our worm farm so I've got tiger worms in them so what how it works is our the shower water goes straight into the soak pit here, which is all it is, is uh, I've dug a huge pit, put river rocks in it, and then the worm farm, the pee from the toilet, and then the water from the sink filtrates through the worm farm, and then it goes through into the rocks. So essentially it's no different than what they actually do at a water treatment plant, is it goes through a system where um, it, gets you know this is the worms eat all the crap before it goes through back into the ground so it's a natural cleansing system so it works well like everything is growing really happily um i have never actually tested like ph levels and stuff but um the only time that sometimes the worm farm does struggle a little bit is in the in the winter it gets a bit too moist sometimes but i've mainly fixed the drainage issues that it had yeah and i think I've personally lived in it for three and a half years now, at least I've lived in it for two. I can't really think of many issues anymore because I guess we're so accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the thing is, it's like, I guess, you know, if, if I always do the cooking and stuff like that and it's not hard to make a mess, but then it's also not hard to clean it up. Mm -hmm. And I know that's one thing that everyone kind of talks about is it's, it's always got like an underlying of mess, but it's also very easy to clean up. Like, we just cleaned this up this morning within like an hour you know because obviously you're coming so mm. but it's never like extreme people buy this sort of thing so that they can experiment with building and I always describe it when I see these really beautiful tiny houses online it's like if they tried to replicate that into a house that would be over a million dollars 
whereas they can create it for like seventy, eighty thousand dollars, or or even less. Like this was like twenty five thousand dollars all up. If that, I don't actually know. But to, to me, if I if I can't even calculate it, it's obviously not a big deal. And yeah, designed all of this. This has got um, cement ball behind it. I've also made sure to create airflow, so it's spaced off the cement board. So you're going to have a gap at the top and the bottom and um, that will help circulate it without letting your walls heat up too much. This is the main seating area. So I wanted to make it a versatile space. This actually does fold up and this can become a spare bed. Never really used it but it's also just like a really nice lounging space. Um, I didn't have enough space to have a couch and a dining table so I incorporated it. And then underneath after Lucy moved in, she complained about the storage, so I made more storage for Lucy. This is all of her clothes. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Uh, so this is the glass house that we built. So we just wanted another really nice space and we've also got a bathtub. So we use a gas caliphant to heat it. Uh, it takes about 40 minutes to fill up. And yeah, it's just a really, really nice space. I mean, we've got all these tomatoes growing at the moment. We've got some cucumbers, I mean, so this is all like um, mesh from work as, as I'm a builder and um, you can see these, they grow perfectly long cucumbers and, and um, if it was industrial I'd grow them in bloody tubes instead of hanging them up. Um, so yeah, nah, it's a really nice wee space, we do definitely store some bits and pieces in here because we live in a house truck but um, yeah, I've just used all recycled uh, materials. This is all Quila, which is very expensive, but it's all offcuts from different jobs. And I've just kind of been experimenting with different bits and pieces. All the windows were free. Um, I did buy a new clear light, but that was only like 250 bucks. But all the materials everywhere else I didn't pay for. I just used bugles to bugle it all together. So if I want to pull it apart, it's not hard to do. And I've got one bag of concrete in each corner because the weight of the structure is enough to keep it down so I'm not really worried about the stability of it. I was living in my Toyota High Ace Jumbo um, I was tour guiding at the time and then I stopped doing that started doing some truck driving and it was becoming winter and I was about to build a, like a big porch on it and put a fireplace and like you know getting like real sick living in it like I got like tonsillitis and stuff because of so much moisture I was down south and I don't know I know other people live in the van but it was just a lot um, and then on Facebook this came up in the garage sale and I my dad was about to come help me and um, I called and I was like we have to go and look at it so I went and looked at it and I remember walking in and it didn't smell musty so I was like it's a really good sign it means that it's not completely ruined and like you know it's not rotted out and things like that um, so yeah that's I, I didn't plan on buying this but I was definitely interested in it I don't think I was anywhere as interested as what I am now just because of how great it is and the financial benefits of just I don't know the great lifestyle that we have now um, so all of this I built um, this here original built that built that and this is my liquor cabinet, which I love. Um, like I said earlier in the video, I just love lots of beautiful things. So um, yeah, we kind of, we have the money to buy nice things. So, you know, we've got a nice liquor cabinet and make nice cocktails. And, you know, instead of going out and spend $200, we can spend 40 bucks and get smashed. Yeah, so all of this is made out of pallet wood. It's actually brand new pallet wood. Um, because it was um, from the factory and it all had the knots in it which they couldn't use because it would ruin the integrity of the pellets which is awesome because it doesn't need to be struck very much structure of it for me um, but it also adds a lot of character and all I did was use um, I sanded it I put linseed oil on it um, if I could go back in time I'd probably chuck it through a thicknesser it would have saved me a lot of time um, yeah and I, I kind of like having everything out on show um, you know, this is all the Tamuka pottery that we like to use, um, a bit of a collector and, and then I just, I find if I hide it away, I'm going to forget I have it, 
and then I'll buy too much of it. So this is our, our Mazda 1983 V2000. This is just a wee holiday home essentially. So we have already live in a beautiful area, but we want to be able to get away somewhere. We wanted something with a bit of character as well. Um, so this is 40 years old this year. Um, we only paid 5,600 for it, which was amazing. Um, came with a brand new warrant and registration. Drove back from Dunedin. I was definitely a bit nervous about it, but um, needed a bit of work. We spent like six, seven months before we went away in it, doing it up. Um, but she runs amazing. It's an old two litre petrol. She uses like 10 litres per 100k. I don't know, it's a little bit comedic in a way, the way it looks, which I kind of love. It's just really quirky. Um, I would probably say, don't be afraid to do something a bit different because everyone seems to stick with the classic tiny house thing. And you know, me and Lucy just bought another house truck that cost us five and a half thousand dollars and it's ten and a half meters by 2.4 wide up to four meters and to even get to that stage with a tiny house you're looking at thirty thousand dollars so you know that's a huge chunk of change to someone that can't already afford maybe like a down for a deposit for a house that's you know if you have thirty thousand you're more likely to do that so if you see something pop up that might seem like a crazy idea but but it's also very affordable just do it um people will definitely think you're crazy and they're not gonna see like the what the potential like you know lucy was even skeptical of buying this next house truck mm. but i always said to her i was like you need to find something that looks like absolute shit because that's where you make it beautiful and that's where you can do just amazing things to it. This is an old oven I got for 200 bucks. It's all gas. The oven and the top. Which I highly recommend if you are wanting to be off grid. Definitely have a, a gas oven. Because that's where it just sucks the energy out. Anything with a heating element on solar. Just destroys your, your battery life. Um, we are also have the option to flick on mains. If we need to, like if it rains like this for days on end, then it can struggle. But my batteries aren't exactly amazing. They're definitely like Chinese. So my batteries are, I think I'm 280 amp hours. And I've got 640 watts of solar. I have a 2000 watt inverter. Um, the inverter's really good. The solar panels are good. They're, they're mono. Um, it's just the batteries, to be honest, are, pr are pretty trash. They're not lithium, they're gel. It's just, like I said, it's... I bought them cheap. The fridge is 12 volt. I originally had a gas fridge, and I've still got the line in, in case I want to go back to gas. Um, the problem is, is that old fridges that you get, especially gas, you have problems, but one thing I learnt as well, if you turn it upside down for a day and put it back up, she usually works again. We completely, like, refurbished it, essentially, so it was all... Um, would look kind of fake wood wood vinyl kind of stuff on it. Um, it just looked disgusting. So um, stripped it all off and all of this woodwork is all Rimu. So it's all recycled Rimu. I did all of the joinery. Um, most of it actually came from an old deck. Um, so yeah, um, put it through a thicknesser, put it through a table saw. Um, and yeah, I did join it all together and it came up really beautiful. And I polyurethane the tops and then I've tongue oiled all of the doors um, and yeah I just love it it's come out really well and it was actually original carpet on top of this and we were able to strip it back and we found this gem so I was gonna do something like wood or something like that but we we're like we don't there's no point in taking something out that's already amazing this is a really cool feature that I really love um, that we've replaced so we just went over top the original roof and this is a kumu and we just tunneled it and it just makes it feel like a really nice warm cabin kind of vibe. We also watch um, a lot of YouTube videos of um, well, van builds, camper mm. builds, house trucks, tiny houses that's where we get all of our inspiration as well mm. um, especially for this new um, new place that we've just bought yeah so yeah we'll refer to that oh remember in that yeah. video we saw them do this pop-up and yeah let's do something like that and oh but we love this bench seat setup so yeah that's kind of where we get a lot of inspiration yeah from i think so yeah. Too. yeah videos like this i do have a pump for the tap um she's a bit noisy um 
but I haven't actually had to replace it in three years, which I think is pretty bloody good. Um, yeah, like I said, where I was living down south, I set it up completely off grid. Um, I didn't actually have the means to connect to mains when I was down that way, um, because where I was living, he was off grid as well. His whole house was. Um, so yeah, it, it works amazing. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to go off grid again, I'd definitely have to do some upgrades. Um, but no, it works well. Um, over here, this is just like, uh, this is a, I built this original and then I needed some more space. So this is like the cutlery drawer here. And then this is the laundry and the bins. And this is honestly been one of the best things I've built because those are the little things that end up just being everywhere. Like your laundry, you know, your rubbish. So I wanted to incorporate it and make it also a nice feature. And this is all recycled. Someone left this outside work one day. So these are our drawers for all of our clothes as well, as well as stairs. They're big steps, but we just didn't want it to, we wanted to make it a useful space. A bit tighter than what I thought I would be. I mean, when I was living alone, I'm sure there was like a, a bit of grunge, but it was uh, generally, I think I was quite tidy, which is quite surprising because um, Lucy always jokes when we first met, I was showing her where everything went from day one, like everything had its place because. So like, just so you know, this is where I keep all my mugs. I was like, why are you showing me this? Like, I don't live here. Because you have to. <laughs> you, you have can't to put just, everything back. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just leave it around. You can't just leave crap everywhere. Like, we're definitely somewhat of a collector of what I consider a collector of like beautiful things because mm. I don't want to have anything in this house that is not have a use. Mm. So I'd rather collect something that we're going to use but still is, is quite a, an attractive thing to look at. Yeah. Like, uh everyday plates and bowls are the kind of ones that people would just kind of have on yeah. display but we love to just use use them all and yeah get yeah. life out of it instead of just like having extra things that you never use you know use everything and this is a queen bed i actually extended the loft out this way because i was like i want to have a good bed so to me it was worth it um and out the front there there's a weird little area where you can put bits and pieces like books and it is actually a really good size loft. These windows are amazing. We honestly like just don't close them. Um, that is another massive thing in a tiny house with um, your loft space. You definitely want adequate airflow. Um, these are great, but you know, if I was to build one, I'd definitely have windows on opposite sides to have airflow. Um, but you know, you can be on, on your knees up here and that's pretty good. I've seen a lot of, of um, the newer places and they're, they're quite low, which I just would not hate. And have a huge TV. A beautiful feature I really love about the original house truck is the curved ceiling. Uh, we love it and um, compared to other house trucks it's a really high ceiling and there's also, like this may seem quite dark in here, but compared to a lot of house trucks um, it's a lot lighter. It's mainly because of the windows behind you. We um, slept on the original swabs for one night and they were so old and squishy. We were like, we have to get new swabs. So we got new um, new swabs from Power Rubber and I made these um, covers, <laughs> sewed them up, which was hard, <laughs> but we got there. This is our sewing room at the moment, my yeah. sewing room. Yeah. James comes in here to study. Yeah. So it's also just a really great extra spot where you can like sit at the table. Yeah. Um, sometimes when we have friends over, we'll actually just come and sit in here because it's kind of a more comfortable sitting spot. So we almost use it as like a um, sleep out kind of vibe. Yeah, like- um, We've had people stay here as well and sleep in here. Yeah, it's been really nice because like I do love our seating area in, in the house truck, but it's not really designed for more than two people because um, you can't just hang out like this. People always, don't know what they to do with themselves. They just, they're real awkward. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's quite cool to be able to do this. But the good thing about doing this up is everything essentially already had a template. So I just was able to trace what was originally here. And you know, they're designed like this because it is the best use of space. So I didn't want to strip it out. And it, it, they are quite well built. Like the whole body is aluminium, the top is fiberglass. If we ever want to sell it, we won't lose money. So to us, this is a great investment and it's just such a cool wee vehicle. We really love it. We so. loved it. We went away for three weeks over the summer and 
there was almost like more storage than in the house. I don't know, so easy to live. Yeah. Because we're used to living in a small space. I always find like, when I think about us working, like um, living in the in the house truck and moving around, it's kind of like a dance that we've kind of like worked out. Mm. We never, honestly, it's like we just know how to move around each other. It's never an issue. Don't work to live, live to work. Is that the way? No, I said that really well. <laughs> Essentially, you don't yeah. want your job to Wait. own you. don't want your job to own you. <laughs> you know, if you can create a lifestyle where if you only work 30 hours a week and you're still happy, that's awesome. People always, the older generation says we don't want to work. I still work my ass off. We still do, you know, cashes in the weekends to make money, but at the same time, if, if it's raining today and the boss says don't go to work, I'm like, sweet. I don't want to go to work in this shit. I don't need to because mm -hmm. I don't have a half a million dollar mortgage. It definitely feels like we're living in the now yeah. and also just enjoying every day because um, there's so much kind of pleasure in mm. where we live and you know I'll come home and be like oh look James the blueberries are ready and mm. we'll go and pick the blueberries and yeah there's so much joy in, in how we live I think. I don't know it's just simple. Mm. It's just simple yeah. yeah. My um, Instagram is this Kiwi really builds. Um, I haven't been as active, but I probably will be um, this year because we we are planning on trying to document the build. Um, we're just a bit kind of like want to get into it instead of setting up the bloody camera. But um, mm. we, we we do want to try and do it. So mm. when you hit me up, I was like, this could be an opportunity to at least just get a few more people kind of watching and. Yeah, it'd be quite cool to... Because I, I did document this, and it was fun. I really enjoyed it, and it was all of my stories. It was definitely not high quality, but people have said to me over the years that they really enjoyed it, so that just feels nice, even if five or ten people said it to me. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm at lucy.vanna, and I also have a little gardening page there. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.